Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Laura Life Shimayo. We're Metaphysical Empowerment and Wellness Events. We have fairs throughout the Northwest and we interview our practitioners, our readers, healers, and vendors, so you get a chance to know who we are so you can meet us by video before you meet us at a fair. So I'm here today interviewing Scarlett Maeve. Scarlett, welcome. Great Hello. to have you. Hello. Thank Hi. you. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> You're welcome. So tell us a bit. What is your work? What do you share at the fairs? So among all of the branches of my work, uh, I am a shamanic practitioner, and one of my deep loves and passions is doing power animal connections. So a power animal is uh, a, a helping ally in animal form that chose you from birth, and this is an ally that whose purpose is, okay, it's called a power animal for a couple of reasons. One is that this being, when it connects with you, it has the ability to help you achieve what you desire in life. It walks through life with you. It goes before you and clears the way. So if you have a job interview or you have an idea that you're pitching or a product that you want to create or, or a difficult conversation you need to have, you can call on this helping ally to go before you to help clear the energy to help um, you know it's it can talk your power animal can talk to let's say you have to have a you know you need to have a difficult situation with your father-in-law um, your power animal can go before you and talk to the power animal of your father-in-law and help um, ease the way for you to communicate spirit to spirit and have less of the ego and the, you know, kind of the, the angst and stuff get in the way. So that's one way in which it's, it fills its role as a power animal. It also comes in and helps protect you energetically. So it helps to, um, so that in other people and their energetic attachments can't attach to you quite so easily. So when you have a power animal, it also fills you with your, what we call flame of life passion from the inside. Um, and then my favorite part though, of what a power animal does is this is a being that has gifts and qualities and abilities that are in resonance with who you are on a soul level. So this being when, when you decide that you are ready to make a connection to it, most of the time it's because there are aspects of yourself that you're willing to step into. They may be things that you know about yourself, but you've been terrified to claim. Or they may be things that you know and you know it's time to put them out into the world in a bigger way. Or things that, um, you know, you've been wondering, like, I think maybe I'm supposed to do this healing thing and I'm not sure. And the power animal comes in and gives you this message about what kind of a healer you are. And you're like, yes, I am ready. So that's actually my favorite, favorite, favorite part of it is, um, you know, the the bulk of the work that I do is connecting people to what I call the real sacred you, that part of you that you were born as before all the world and their projections started attaching themselves to you. And, and a power animal is such an incredible gift to help connect you back to the real sacred you, that you that you were born as. So that's what I'm doing and I'm really excited about it because it's one of my favorite things. <laughs> so do people tend to come with you um, with a request of what is my power animal or do they come with questions about animals that are in their lives? you know, or that they have been shown up for them and they want to understand more? What? Mm, great question. So they're, they're two different, they can be two different things. So when, pe when I do readings for people, they're mostly because they want to know what their power animal is. And um, the, the other piece of work that you're speaking to is what I call recognizing the oracles or recognizing the omens. So, um, and I teach like an entire class on how to recognize the oracles that are showing up in your life. So like I have been seeing hawks all over and I don't know why I'm seeing all these hawks. Um, I can definitely work with that as well. Like we can sit down together and I can ask you questions and talk to you about what you're experiencing and help you understand the message that those oracles are bringing you. And I'm happy to do that there too. But uh, mostly what I do at the fairs is, um, is the power animal work. But if you do have that situation and you want more information, we can, we can sit and dive into that as well. <laughs> can you say a little bit of, of what, what's, a, like, what's your process of how you work? How do you know what someone's um, power animal is? Oh, is thank you like? for how asking. You yes. Teams? Yeah. So um, what I do is called a shamanic journey. And I go in to what 
in shamanism is called non-ordinary reality. And I talk to my power animal. He's one of my helping allies. And I go in and I ask, I go in and I tell my power animal that, hey, I'm here on behalf of, you know, if I was doing it for you, I'm here on behalf of Lorelei. And she wants to know what her power animal or animals, sometimes people have more than one, it's very common, um, want to know what her power animals are. Will you, you know, take me and show me Lorelai's power animal. So we go into the non-ordinary reality. My power animal finds your power animal and I um, sit with the power animal and, and receive the message, what the power animal wants you to know. Um, and, you know, the messages are different for every person. Sometimes they're very much about what they need to embrace. Sometimes they're more about, hey, this is, these, these are your next steps. Even when the person hasn't asked me what you know, I need to know what my next steps are. So I sit with the power animal. I get the information. I come out of the journey space and I, and then I convey what, what the power animal is speaking. And then from there, as we sit, as a, cause I'm still connected to the journey space. If the person has questions they want to ask of their power animal, Hey, can you ask my power animal, um, about, you know, this upcoming move that I'm contemplating and what they might have to say about that, for instance, then I will go in and ask the power animal. Um, I'm also all about empowerment. And so before, before anybody leaves the session, I give them some ways in which they can, can connect to the power animal because what I do is just the beginning. And what I want for people is to, to develop a really rich relationship with this helping ally. And so before they leave, I will give them some steps as to how they can begin to connect and begin to know and feel and understand what their power animal is trying to tell them and how to work with, with them. Okay. Great. That's great. You said something early on that had me curious. Can you just share a little bit about like the breadth of your work so that I, we understand that this is part of it and like what are Oh, I'd love to do that. Thanks. <laughs> uh, so I have been, I have been a heretic since I think I was born. I, I am the person who is not ever what people expected me to be. I was a four pound baby, but I was full term. I was the only blonde, blue eyed kid I was the youngest of six in a family of tall people. Oh, I'm five feet tall. I'm blonde. Um, I have blue eyes. My siblings are like five, seven, five, eight, six, two. They're brunettes. They have hazel eyes or brown eyes. So <laughs> I was born kind of as the contradiction. I was born as the person to um, really make you rethink what you think you know. And um, all of the branches of my work. So I've done a lot of my own deep, personal inner work after having a really traumatic childhood. I have um, mentored for about 12 years in a particular body of work that involves um, really getting comfortable in understanding what you feel and challenging old beliefs. And then the shamanic work showed up in my life as well. But all of those different branches lead to one place, which is um, the work that I love, that I love, 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 love is getting people connected to the real sacred you that you were born as, is what I mentioned before. So most of us have been living at some point somebody else's life. And, you know, Lorelai, you and I talked a little bit earlier about changing our names. Like even from the name that we were born with, even though, the, even though our parents had the best of intentions, it was their idea and their projection of who we thought we should be. And in lots of indigenous cultures, they understand the power of a word. They understand that when you name something, there is a certain power that comes with that name. So, you know, our parents, bless their hearts, even with their best of intentions, gave us a projection that wasn't us. So from the moment we were named, we started this kind of down this path of living somebody else's life. And your third grade teacher might have sent home a report that says, she talks way too much. Or your seventh grade teacher might have said, you know, they need to participate in class more. They're just too quiet. Um, you know, all, there's lots of different places where we've been told we're too much, we're not enough. Um, or how dare you have, you know, I was told that I was that I was too audacious and that I was, that I thought too much of myself in certain aspects of what I knew I could do because I had these things that I could do from the time I was three years old. So we've been told these things, we've shut these part, these parts of ourselves down or 
you know, billboards have told us that we're, that we're too fat, too old, um, too skinny, uh, not in, not, not in good enough shape. Like all of those societal things on the outside where we get, where people project onto us this belief of who we are. And so we begin to experience in shamanic terms, soul loss. And we, be, we begin to lose parts of ourselves and begin to start living somebody else's life. So what I do, all of the branches of my work lead to people coming back to a knowing of how beautiful and magnificent and sacred they are, the real them. And my favorite part of it is taking the things that people have judged as a wrongness the places that you, the things you don't like about yourself, the stories you have about where you're inept or you're too much, and helping you to see that most of those aren't even yours, that there's something that somebody else told you that you took on as a belief about you. And the ones that you found that haven't been super helpful, oftentimes there's actually a potency behind those. There's a strength, but because you were afraid to express it, it's come out sideways in this way that's unhelpful. So, you know, the power animal connection, it goes back to connecting you to this being which is there saying, yes, express your full life force express your flame of life passion and I have chills like going up and down my body right now like be who you are and I'm going to help you stand in that ability to be who you are and yes I'm very passionate about it you can probably tell but <laughs> great, great. <laughs> has this I always love. been part of your professional work or was there an evolution of how this became your professional work yes and no um, I didn't realize until a, really about a year ago that this is what this was the common thread that ran through everything I was doing um, So yeah, it's always been what I've done. I just didn't know I was I was like well I'll, I do soul retrieval and I do power animal connections and I do energetic removals for people and I also do work on you know shadow work and and helping people to really see the truth of who they are in and, and I, I had them all separate and it really wasn't until about a year ago and I was like, oh, wait a minute, this is the thread that runs through. <laughs> so it's what I've always done. I didn't know that, that, that it was what I've always done, if that makes any sense. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Yeah. Also, if people want to find more about you online, where do they go? So it's scarletmave.com. And Mave is not spelled the traditional way. It's spelled the Celtic way. So it's M A E. B is in boy, H is in horse. So the Celtic spelling of Mave is the B and the H make the V sound. So Scarlet with two T's, Mave, M M A E B H. Great. That's where you find me. Sweet. And they can also find you at our events, Metaphysical yes. Empowerment and Wellness Events. And so online, we're at metaphysicalempowermentevents.com. We're currently in Seattle, Portland, Salem, Eugene, and also online. We look forward to connecting with you. Thank you yes. so much, Scarlet. You're welcome. Thank you. I look forward to seeing you.